what's up welcome to my channel today we're going to be talking about how you can repair clothes instead of throwing them away and getting new ones let's get to it i was thinking today would be a nice sweatpants kind of day you know matchy you saw when i did the somersault except when i popped it out the dryer i'm gonna try to wash it and see if i can get it out wish me luck if you are rough on your clothes like I am, you may uh, have a few uh, small holes or tears that appear in your clothes sometimes. And I am going to show you today how you can just repair those yourself instead of tossing it out and getting a new one or paying someone to do it for you. I'm going to show you on my ski jacket here. I'll show you where the tear is in a second. But to do this, to repair your own clothes, you will need three things some scissors for cutting your thread, some thread, and some needles. Um, the thread, it would be best if it matches your fabric. I'm using white today, even though my fabric is black, just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but using the same color of thread as your fabric will hide the repair better. And needles, you will want to use larger needles for thicker fabrics to avoid bending or breaking your needle and then smaller daintier needles for thinner fabrics to avoid leaving holes in the fabric when you're poking the thread through with the needle. Um, sometimes it may also be helpful to have a pin to hold uh, two pieces of fabric together so that it's kind of like having a little third hand there so while you're sewing they're held nicely in place. The clothes that I will be repairing today is my ski jacket. It has a tear here in the little thumb hole. Um, so before it completely rips apart, I'm gonna fix that. And okay, then. so I've got my needle here and I'm gonna get some thread. Gonna make sure the end doesn't have any uh, fuzzy bits coming off of it. So I'm just gonna lick it. Um, if you lick it and then pinch the thread between your lips, it'll often smooth it out. So I'm going to poke that through there. Also, don't mind my jank nails. I'll paint my nails later. All right, just back off. You'll want to pull it through um, so that you have enough thread for the project that you're going to be working on. Mine's going to be pretty small here. It's just a small little hole or a small little rip in my sleeve or thumb hole whatever you want to call it so then you'll cut them then what I do is I tie a knot here so go around the finger tuck the thread back through pull tight hold it like this and then you can just see the knot there you're just gonna cut right after that knot Ooh. and then you have your thread Ooh, look at it. Then, here's the piece we're going to be working with. And you can see that it should be tucked kind of back inside this fabric, um, just the way it's popping out. And there's some marks here from where the thread used to be. So I'm going to take it, try to tuck it back in. Ooh, good as new. <laughs> um, and... Ideally, we will stitch it so that it sits just like that. And you can just pin into the fabric here. Just watch out for that. And obviously, you don't want to uh, like stab yourself, you know. So, now that I've got that pinned a little more securely, I'm going to hold this. I'm trying to hold it so you can see it. Um, and. I'm going to go ahead and poke the needle through. I'm going to do it on the outside. Because this sits very flush against my hand, I'm going to put it on the outside. But if you're worried more about aesthetic things, you'd want to start on the inside because you don't want this little tuft of thread here and our little starter knot to stick on the outside of your fabric. We want that hidden. So I'm going to poke through here and move my finger out of the way. And you'll see it comes through the other side. I'm going to flip it inside out. And again, remember, try to keep that 
aligned properly. And then before you pull all the way through here, I'm going to stick it back through. Bring this thread through up until there's about an inch left. And then I'm going to take my needle and poke it through my two pieces of thread here, how I made that little knot, so that it keeps it nice and secure. I'm gonna just poke it back through here, just a couple millimeters Whee! apart. <laughs> Is everyone feeling anxious watching me do this? And then you'll see here, you don't really see the thread that much on this side. And um, that is what would be on the outside of a piece of clothing if we started on the inside as opposed to the outside. Sometimes that happens. You just pull the needle back through <laughs> and you try again and you watch closely when you poke it through to make sure you have it coming back out the other side at the right spot. Okay, so now here you will loop or poke the needle through this loop that we've created. And that again makes it very secure and keeps all of the thread kind of interconnected. Okay, so I'm gonna poke it through here. And we're gonna bring her on back. And this really doesn't take much time, uh, maybe five minutes if you are doing it and not trying to talk like me. Okay, oh, there, there's a good example. So I didn't pull very tight and you can see how the thread is still showing a good amount there. So if I had wanted to keep that hidden a little better, I would poke it very, very closely to where we came out just to keep the thread that's shown to a minimum. And this is probably going to be my last one here. Okay, pull that and then I'm going to cut my thread. I split it apart. I take one and I loop it through that last little stitch that we had. We haven't tightened it yet. Then I grab both pieces of thread and I pull to tighten my stitch throughout. Try to get it nice and secure here. Okay, then I take it. I'm gonna pull this pin out. This is just a hazard now. I take it and I wrap it around my finger. Actually, I lied. Don't do that. I take it. <laughs> I make sure they're split apart again. And I tie a knot like you do in your shoelace. So I'll show you again. Take it, wrap it around your fingers here if you want, fold it over, tuck the thread through and pull tight. And it's just like a regular knot. We am gonna do that three times. Is it overkill? Maybe, but we will do it. And then I'll do it one more time here. Again, just like you do on your shoelaces. Now I'll put them back together, wrap them around my fingers, tuck the thread through like we did at the very beginning, and then I'll hold it here on my thumb very, very close. Ooh, sorry. Very, very close to the stitch, and I'll slowly pull it tight until we're almost all the way down here. This is a little tricky, it takes time to learn, but basically you kind of pin the thread down and keep pulling and gently readjusting. And this just forces the knot to be very close to our actual end there. So let me show you why we do that. If I had just tied a knot here, okay, and pulled, we would have ended up three inches out and that would kind of be a useless knot because nobody wants three inches of thread just hanging off their clothes. So you tie that knot 
I'll go ahead and just do two just to show you. So you get it all set up here. And then just pin the fabric down with a finger or pin the thread down with a finger right by a little piece of, or a little stitch here. And then slowly pull and see how it's just forcing that knot down our thread back to our stitch, back close to our stitch. Then when you get to the very end, it takes a little finagling, but you can kind of pinch and drag the knot down as you pull on the fabric or on the thread and you'll see it will end up fairly close. So this is again another reason why it's good to start from the inside of your clothes to make that stitch here up here on the inside and that is what it looks like nice and snug and it's pretty durable. Um, I've not personally had clothing that I've stitched like this or pillowcases or anything come back apart even in the wash. Good job. Ugh. Who's ready to ski? Where's that stitch? I don't know. I don't see it. You don't see it. Now that I've made my hair incredibly staticky. That is next level. Okay. So here is that finished stitch as you saw. Um, this is something that can save you a ton of money, uh, save you clothes, it's better for the environment, and you wobble it. And who doesn't love, you know, saving that moolah? <laughs> I hope this tutorial is helpful. If you have any sewing tips or tricks for repairing your own clothes and things around the house, feel free to drop them down below. I'll check them out, uh, try them next time I need to repair something. And if you try what I did here in the video today, let me know how it goes. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great week.